Back with State Rep. John Saliero in the LDR Pop Quiz. Question three. Among the signers of the Declaration of Independence was a doctor who went on to become the Surgeon General of the Continental Army who was a physician. Who was it? Benjamin Rush. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't even give you the multiple choices. Josiah Bartlett, right? Yeah, okay. Benjamin Rush from Pennsylvania. He also played a key role That's right. in, in mending the rift between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson after their turns as president. Here's the final question to go four for four. Not adding any pressure here, but that's going to put you in the upper echelon of the OTR Pop Quiz. Boston Symphony Symphony Hall is located in the South End. It opened in October of 1900. A famous composer's name is inscribed above the stage. So your question is, who was that composer? Is it Bach? Is it Mozart? Is it Beethoven? And by the way, Janet Wu nailed this one. I'm just telling you, we in our rehearsal. I'm going to say it's Bach. You know, I wish we had a oh, sound effect. Oh, I almost said Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> we need one of those sounds that goes. <laughs> Beethoven, it is the only musician's name inscribed in the building. You, your first visit uh, was Christian. Beethoven, right? This is your first yeah. visit. You got yeah. three very out of good. four. Very three good. out of four is very good. Very good. Room for improvement <laughs> for your next visit. Um, everybody, I think a lot of people in the political world know that you're a very close friend of Joe Kennedy, who's now running for the Senate. Uh, you know him from the Peace Corps. That's I think right. you met in the Dominican Republic, was yeah. that? And yeah. um, I, you've been campaigning with him. In fact, here's a, a video of the two of you walking mass and cast. So my question to you is, is it safe to say that you're going to endorse him? No, absolutely. I mean, Joe's a dear friend. I mean, it's, it's funny how our worlds collide now. I mean, here we are, two young men in their early mid-20s in the Peace Corps. You know, we lived about a quarter mile away from each other. Um, Joe was on his way out. I was c coming in, and the first time I met him, he was this guy who was in my community. I was like, why is this, who's this American guy? This is my turf. And I, I met him and he was, you know, he's a decent, humble, good man. Um, he actually provided some money uh, for a project he wanted to complete in the Dominican Republic with a Haitian immigrant community that I lived in. So I was able to finish the project for him and to you know, build bathrooms for a community that had no, uh, no bathrooms. Mm. As you know, uh, Ed Markey, who he is running against, uh, is also trying to collect a lot of endorsements from millennials because that seems to be the mm. key demographic area. What's your argument to them that uh, Joe is the better option for them? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure Ed Markey's, you know, I've talked with him a time or two, but I know Joe. Um, Joe's a humble, decent, he's a good man, and who believes what he says. And the fact that he spent two years of his life um, serving in poverty um, with an incredibly poor country, and he wasn't a Kennedy there, he was Joe. Um, and that means a lot to me. I mean, to, to the extent that he would learn the language of the people he was working with to serve them, mm -hmm. I and mean, he's the ultimate um, public service champion. And, you know, as someone who's devoted my life to public service, whether it's as a, a physician, a captain in the Army, or as a Peace Corps volunteer, I get Joe. And that's why I was so honored for Joe when he came to my community um, after the, his announcement. And, you know, I wanted to show him what was going on in Mass and Cass, an issue that he cares very much about, substance use and mental health. So as we, as we mentioned and we've established this morning, you are a doctor and you see from the ground level just how health insurance works. So before we let you go this morning, is, is Medicare for all uh, the best solution, yeah. a solution? Mm -hmm. what, what is your opinion? Well, I'm a co-sponsor for the for legislation, all. but you know, healthcare is such a complicated and intricate um, issue. You know, I have the benefit of living in Canada for a year as an adult and living in Paris for a year, too countries that you know have essentially Medicare for all options and the stories that I would see and how easy it was and how, how much money it saved um, I think there are lessons that we need to learn here in the state of Massachusetts as well as the country and so you know health care expenditures out of control and we need to do something it really is an emergency and so you know I'm here to really you know help lead that fight and work with my colleagues in the state house to fight for more affordable um, and better health care for but all. But Medicare for all is, is it necessarily a panacea or what or no? Or Should yes? it be the only option? Should it be the only option? Well, I think there's a role for right now for the, the private insurance companies to pay as we come up with that plan. Medicare for all is not going to happen overnight, right. you know, but I think we should start to develop pathways into, to get there, whether that's a public option or whether that's, um, you know, um, so supporting other uh, ideas that can get people into but that But you pathway. talk a lot about options as yeah. opposed to mandates. Well, for right now, you right. know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a big disruptor to the health care system and it's not going to happen overnight. John Santiago, pleasure to have you with us this morning. Really Great. appreciate you coming you. on OTR. Mine. The Sunday Roundtable is next here on OTR. Elizabeth Warren joined striking Chicago teachers on the picket line. Is tardiness with her health care plan now hurting her presidential campaign? We'll talk Sir, about that as we continue. Elizabeth Warren.